Now, I've tipped my hand a little bit by showing you that these things have properties. But I want to delve into that a little bit more deeply because as you begin to customize your workflow, you may want to take advantage of those properties to set Acrobat up to work the way that you want it to work. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to one more page again to kind of clear the palette so that we have a blank page from which to work. I'm going to select the sticky note tool and I'm going to add a sticky note to the page. I'll click and drag and there we go. The sticky note is yellow and it has a particular icon. Now I'm going to move the panel off to the side again for the same reason that I always do, just to kind of get the panel out of my way. Notice that the properties toolbar has changed to refer to the pop-up text properties, or if I click on the note itself, it changes simply to the sticky note properties. Again, the properties toolbar is very dynamic. It tries to keep up with what you're doing. In this case, I want to change the properties of the sticky note itself both by changing the icon and by changing the icon's color. So let's start with the color because perhaps in my workflow I've decided that an orange icon requires immediate attention whereas yellow is more like a warning that you need to pay attention to but you might not need to act on right away. So to change the color I'm going to select the change color palette option here and I'll select orange and you'll notice that both the note itself and the text panel for the sticky note become orange. Again, it's a great way to color code the changes that you're requesting so that at a glance you can see what things need immediate attention versus what things you might be able to wait on before you attempt to change. I've shown you the stamp tool and it's a great way to create a custom face for your comment. However, there are some built in for the sticky note in Acrobat, so I'll point them out. Under icon, I can select for example, key. Now in my workflow, I would need to decide what key means. In this case, uh, who knows, maybe it's a key change that I want to make or whatever. I actually tend to leave it to the text note icon because that's a very plain Jane icon and I tend only to use sticky notes in cases where I want the author to make a change to the overall page. So the actual icon isn't something that I tend to use. If I need to change the icon, that's when I'll use the stamp tool to produce a custom icon that's much easier to determine. There's one more property here that I'll point out from the toolbar, and that's the opacity property. Sometimes these notes, when they sit on top of things, obscure what's behind them. And if you have a number of them on the page, you might not have the option of moving them around to get them out of the way. In a case like that, you can set the opacity so that it is semi-opaque. And in this case, I've made the note semi-opaque, and I'll move it over top of something. I'll just move it over top of this word here and then deselect it. This is sort of a double-edged sword. Yes, I can see below the note, but yes, it's also more difficult to see the note in the first place. Also, notice that that has applied to the text panel as well. So if I move this over top of and then deselect it, I can see through the sticky notes text panel. If this is something that you want because you want to be able to see the text underneath it, that's very convenient. If not, then you can always select it and reset the property so that it goes to 100% opacity. And instead of using opacity, again, I tend to choose to put my notes off to the side of the document so that they're easier to see while looking at the document's contents. But these aren't all of the properties that I can take advantage of. I can click more to get to the Sticky Notes Properties dialog box. Let me cancel this, though, because there's another way to get here. If you don't have the Properties bar open, and I'll go ahead and close it, I can very quickly get to any comments properties by simply right-clicking on it or control-clicking it if I'm on a Macintosh and choosing Properties. When I do, the Sticky Note Properties dialog box comes up. It gives me all of the options that the Properties toolbar offered me, plus some more. So here I can choose the icon, the color, and the opacity, but I can also choose to name the author. You'll notice that these Sticky Notes all are indicated as being authored by Total. That's because the login for this particular computer is for total training. If I'm using a different computer, it might say something different, but I can set the author to be me by simply typing my name here. So I can change the author of a particular note in the note's properties. And that's very, very useful if, again, I'm working on different computers and I want to make sure that it's known that the author is me for a particular note. Once I set a note up to work the way that I like it to, I can then simply click Make Properties Default and select OK. The reason I need to do that is because if I hadn't done that, then the sticky note would revert to whatever properties were in use before I changed them. So in this case, it's going to be orange and use the icon that I've chosen. 
Now, if you're watching, you'll notice that that doesn't use my name, and I'll show you why that is. That's something that Acrobat is doing because unless you change it specifically, Acrobat wants to assume that the person writing the note is the person logged into the computer. I'll go ahead and close this because I want to show you that I can right click on this, set my properties, and I'll just quickly change the color to make an obvious change. I'll make it a green note and say OK. Yet, when I add a new note, the properties have reverted to what they were before. A quick way to fix this is if you've set up a particular note the way you like it and you just want to continue from here, you can select the note, right click on the note, or control click on a Mac, and just simply choose Make Current Properties Default. And then whatever properties you had set for that note will become the properties of that tool moving forward. Properties are something that are important to change because, again, it allows you to communicate visually with the people in your workflow. Green notes are just things that I'm happy about. Orange notes are errors that need to be fixed. Yellow notes are warnings, but you don't have to make changes. That's an example of how I use that. If you look at all of the tools that Acrobat has to offer in the review and comment workflow, they all have properties, and you'll definitely want to explore them because they can allow you to set Acrobat up to do the work that you want it to do.